and it caused a little actually it caused a little uh, uh, a problem between Billy and I for a while till we got straightened away. Well, I you know I shared the information, but um, I think Dr. Jim Deardorff, you maybe had him on your show or so. He he looked at the documents trying to disprove them. He ended up writing a book called Celestial Teachings, the real Book of Matthew. Yeah. You know, a real fascinating document. So anyhow, I was responsible for getting him over here. What happens is other people get the information and they may translate it. And so I'm looking at the same thing that I get from the ET. Right now, the information that I have in the books that I have, I know where they come from. And I don't worry about that. It's the physical stuff that I, I have to verify because like you and other people that are listening... They want to know where this stuff is at. Well, I'm going to try to point you in the right way. Okay, because I'm sure that some of the things you say, uh, people will accuse you of being uh, a little off your rocker, uh, off base a little bit, and they want proof. That's right. And so what I'm trying to do is, as the ET says, we will give you information that you can verify on your plane. They say, we're not going to do it for you. In fact, we're not going to take you off of your planet to another planet because you trash it in half the time. And I believe that. I mean, that's been an example of everything we've been doing on this planet. Well, yeah, but it doesn't have to take them to tell you and uh, no, tell me that. No, it doesn't have to do anything like that. That's right. But I hear the stories. You know, I have all the, the a lot of new ages. Well, all I have to do is just hum and we're going to be taken aboard a craft and we're going to go someplace. Or, you know, people, we're going to build our own spacecraft. Well, you're aware of that. Have they ever done that for you, though, by the way? Did you ever jump aboard and go, choom, way out there? Um, I, frankly, they want to keep me grounded. I remember some time, but what they try to do is they keep you grounded to the physical reality. Now, some people have been taken off. I've talked to other ones. They, you know, like Billy, he's been taken to other universes. How many of us are being contacted right now? Um, there's Billy, there's you. I mean, Oh, no, there's thousands of them. Uh, a lot of them won't. I've had people call me that are in contact right now. I've got a gentleman in Colorado I'm talking to that uh, there are a lot of extraterrestrials that are walking among us. They look similar to us, you know, so close you wouldn't be able to know. Do we know what planet they might be from? Mm, well, when I, flew those to, look, look, when I flew to Barcelona, Spain, and I talked to Dr. Antonio Rivera, he's in contact with a group from the planet Umo, the Umites. They look just like us, but they don't have vocal cords. So total communication is telepathic. And there is an interesting thing in the documents that they were uh, they were sharing. They were showing the key to our DNA programming because that's basically what it is. They say the gas krypton at the, uh, at the moment of conception, there's a gas called krypton that is formed, and that's the key to the DNA formation of your body. And that's it was the same identical information I got. Remember the chlorophyll? Yeah. Based on South and South America, same thing, information. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I've had fun running around the planet finding out. And, and uh, I ran into, of course, Colonel Wendell Stevens, who I feel is probably the foremost researcher. And I went running around the world because I had the money to do it. Do you, do you still, or is it all gone now? No, no. I was, in fact, I was heading off to India. Uh, but you can't get up to Srinagar right now. There's stuff happening there. And in China... Uh, there's, there's things that are happening just all over the planet. You know, the crop circles are occurring. Let me, let me ask you about that. Do they talk to you about crop circles? Yeah, they're basically two things. They want people to, all of a sudden, there's something going on. They want to say, people, there is things going on, but what is it? What they're doing is stabilizing the planet. Remember, it's going to flip on about the axis about the year 2000. They're, they're trying to keep the planet tuned up or keep it so it doesn't prematurely do that to give us time enough to maybe change the ending of the story that's written for us by the guys on the planet. All right, but what's the purpose of the crop formations? Uh, each one of them have a different uh, frequency that they're generating within the planet for the stabilization. They said it's not important at this time to let you know. Do the formations have anything to do with what they're doing, or are they just doing that? Uh... It's, a, it's a combination. It's a tuning up the planet. It, it does two things. It makes you ponder what's going on, but it's also stabilizing the planet. Hmm. Yeah, and I guess also that's... get ready. I, we're in a period, they're telling us within the next 60 days or so, we're going to have some new geophysical changes on the planet. Now, whether it, I don't know what it's going to be. It could be, you know, Yellowstone blowing off. or the. I know that the San Andreas is getting ready to go about 18 feet. Cause so I so, so it could be team. something big. Pardon? Could be something huge. That's right. We have some geophysical changes that are going to be happening as the planet starts uh, taking care of itself because we're just killing it off. Now, is that going to be done 
because it's a natural occurrence, or are they playing around with this? No, it's a combination. We we are doing the playing around with it because what we're doing to the planet itself, and it's responding. The extraterrestrials are just monitoring that. I, I flew to eastern Colorado. Yes. Well, I flew to Denver, and we went out to Franktown and Kiowa out there, and there was a farmer out there that had his huge hole that was drilled down in the ground. And I got samples of the, the soil that was actually fused. And the ETs are taking soil samples. I mean, they're playing like a real geologist or, you know, scientist. They're taking everything in consideration, what we're doing to the planet, so they can have a record of what happened to planet Earth. I mean, it's fascinating to see what they're doing. And like I said, I've got samples. (laughs) You have these samples with you? Yeah, I do. When I go out on my lectures, by the way, I have a lecture going on in in Albuquerque in a month and a half, I think, with uh, uh, Brian O'Leary, the astronaut. Uh, we're gonna. I'll be sharing a lot of this information, uh, you know, showing pictures, and I'll have the samples so you can see them yourself. Uh, I hope that most of the people that read or get the handbook for the new paradigm, uh, they become in contact themselves. Then I'm out of the loop. You understand? Because that's what these things are designed for: is to make you be in contact yourself. All right. So you just do the presenting, basically. That's right. Did they ever talk to you, uh, George, about the the alien abduction uh, phenomenon? That was another group of extraterrestrials that consider us a virtual reality game. The, since they figured, since they designed some of us, that we're just kind of like what we play around with uh, the animals that we have right now, we're experimenting. Mm-hmm. That's what they consider us. So we have, like I say, we have plays that are going on, many plays happening simultaneously at this minute. Gee. It, it's, well, look up at the stars tonight, George. I mean, you're out. It's dark. And, I mean, when you get out of the studio, go look up at the stars that are strobing red, blue, and green in color. Okay. What will that tell me? Stars don't strobe. Those are spacecraft that are looking at planets. Well, sometimes, so don't you get that inversion because of the atmosphere? Not strobing ones. You'll see them. You'll, you know, they're out there. They're monitor- Look, we're being monitored on this play. And uh, if you were on the... Uh, the team, a scientific team, and monitoring and see what we've done to an island or something else, you send out people to do it. That's exactly what they're doing with a non-interference type deal. Again, we have some extraterrestrials that are interfering, so we have these things we have to discern what's going on, like the animal mutilations, like the people being abducted. However, some people are being abducted who have been given permission at some other level for them to see what the heck's going on. So, again not up for me to determine what's going on i'm just looking at the end results all i know is that the information in the handbook and its sequels are so phenomenal from people that are getting the information and how they're changing i mean these books are going around the planet george everywhere now you know we we talked a little about about the pleiadians and what they might be telling you about a planet x or so and also we have we have um, always been told about the Zetas from Zeta Reticuli, that yeah. they too are, have been very forceful in talking about a planet X. That, of course, didn't occur either. Have you ever been in touch with them, their so-called Zetas from, no. from that area? Yeah, that Zeta, no, I, the Pleiadians was my connection, and then the above them, the spirit above them. In other words, most of the communication that I had, the higher energies at that point, the, the if you want to call it spirit, uh, the what they tell us that we're nothing more than a product of the creation itself. Above all, as Billy says, above all things is the creation. As the creation is contemplating what it's doing, it puts into motion an extension of its thought, because that's what we are as a product of the thought. We have our own thought, and all of that is basically downloaded and uploaded every day within creation. 